Welcome to Rally Week here at Believers. We're going to tell you how to get involved with a life group at Believers. You don't want to miss out on that. We know that's where real life change is going to happen, so that's going to be wonderful. Be a part of this life group's church. We're going to give glory to God right now. Lift your voices. Raise your hands to the heavens. Let's say, God, there's nothing impossible in your holy name. We welcome you with all the glory, all the honor, all the praise that you deserve. Nothing is impossible in you, King Jesus. Amen. You are so marvelous, Jesus. You are 
are so marvelous, Jesus. And this I know that even in the valley, even in the struggle, you are there. You are our healing. You are our shelter. You are our mighty fortress, God. Always, always, we look to you. We worship you. said it would be easy never said there'd be no pain but you promised you'd go with me and your promises you always keep Lord I confess how much I need you I confess that I am weak I won't fail you, but your promises, they won't fail me. a single day.
church right now, everyone, lift your hands up right now. And just say this praise to God. Say, Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your strength. Just begin to speak it in your own words. Tell them that you're faithful, that, you, that he's so good all the time. Come on, begin to cry it out right now, church. Tell them you love him. Tell them you love him. Oh, we love you, God. We're so thankful for your goodness. We're so thankful for your faithfulness. And every trial, every season, Lord. you today and always we thank you that you are our shelter our refuge we trust you in all times and all seasons and we're thankful for your presence here today we love you we bless you and it's in your name we pray everybody say amen amen give the lord a shout of praise before you take a seat this morning amen amen go ahead and be seated this morning i want you to turn to your neighbors today is name tag day you should have gotten one before you came in today. Make sure that you've got it filled out. Say hey to people next to you right now for a moment. Hi, Joe. <laughs> What's up, Allie? <laughs> oh, oh, just, just Allie for me. Just Allie. <laughs> well, good morning and welcome to Believers. We are so excited you're here. We are a home of authentic Christianity expressed through love, acceptance, and forgiveness. And yes, it is name tag day, and that's because we are uh, building our bold community today, and it's also rally week, which I don't know if you know, but life groups are pretty darn exciting. And so today we are celebrating, we're getting excited, we're rallying because we're kicking off our winter life groups this week. So if you look in your little welcome book, you have a bold community card just like this one. Pull it out for me. You can do it. <laughs> so this is one of your two action cards today. So hold on to this card. It's how you're going to get plugged in and sign up for a life group today. And then I also want you to pull out your big white communication card. And this really helps us build community here at Believers because it's our way of connecting with you throughout the week, not just on Sundays. So I want you guys to fill these out with as much information as you're comfortable with. And let us know if it's your first or second time here on this card. You can indicate that up top. And what you're going to do if it's your first or second time, you're going to turn this card in to the Welcome Center. It's that black counter that is out in the lobby. And Miss Amy has a gift for you just for turning in this card because we're excited you're here and because we appreciate you taking the time to turn in your card. Card. So again, if it is your first or second time, you will take the card to the Welcome Center. And if it is not your first or second time, um, you can turn these in when we take up tithes and offering. And that's also where you can turn in your life group sign up card. And while you have your communication card out, I want you to flip it over and look on the back 
there are some sign-up prompts on the back, and one of them is for baptisms, which is coming up on January 24th. That is an awesome, bold next step that you can take. If you have not been baptized, it is a great way, it is the way to publicly declare your faith um, through water baptism, and it's always really exciting. We have baptisms during both services. You can pick which service you want to be baptized in. So if that's something you're interested in, or you just want to learn more about baptisms and how we do it here at Believers, you can sign up for that on your card, and we will come contact you this week with more information and get you signed up. So we appreciate you taking the time to build community through these action cards, through signing up for Life Group, and through wearing a name tag. And you're going to hear more about what bold community means here at Believers from Pastor Scott right after this video. Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to 2021. And we're talking about this year, our theme is going to be Enabled Boldness, where we believe that we're going to be enabled by the Holy Spirit to speak His Word boldly and to do great and mighty things. But you can go back last week if you missed that sermon. We talked about the prayer that the church prayed. Fill us with boldness and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. The Holy Spirit fell upon them and they all began to speak His Word of boldness. I believe it's time for us as a church to rise up and be the bold church that Christ Jesus has called all of us to be. Now, you may be like me, and right when you get excited about enabled boldness, you get excited about God doing something great and mighty in your life. You're excited and pumped up. Well, God can use me in a bold and mighty way through the power of the Holy Spirit. There's that little inner voice that comes in your head and says, now, wait a minute, time out. You've got issues. Anyone ever heard that? You've got some problems. How is God going to use you when you have issues and problems? So if you've ever heard that voice, I'm here to confirm it with you. I'm going to say, yes, I agree. You have got some issues. But I've got issues too, right? We all have issues, and I believe that that's what makes this concept, this idea we're talking about today, bold community, so intriguing is because through these small group settings, what we call life groups here at Believer's Church, we're going to begin to work through our issues together. We're going to help one another. We're going to encourage one another. We're going to build each other up. It's going to be a safe environment and a safe place where we can share what God is doing with us. So it's not just talking about community, but it's bold community, to boldly be in a community, to boldly share our hearts with one another, to boldly spur each other on to that enabled boldness that what God has called us to do. So I want you to take your notes out today. If you're wel watching online, welcome guys, watching online as well. You can go to your Bible app, version. You can cl click in events, type in Believer's Church. Your notes will pop up there. If you're in-house, your notes look like this. So go ahead and pull those out. We're going to talk about life groups today, our system of life groups. Now, if you're new today, welcome to Believer's Church. Um, you're going to hear something about us today. This is kind of an instructional to remind us what we're all about, life groups, but you get to hear it too. So just enjoy and see what we do at Believer's Church and see that maybe you might want to be a part of one of these life groups as well. But I want to give you today uh, four whys, four reasons why we do life groups and eight how to's, how to do a life group, or how we do life groups. Don't panic, the eight are short, we're not going to be here all day, okay, so, but let's just go ahead and start, let's just jump right into it today and talk about the four whys. The first why is this, we do life groups here at Believer's Church because small groups are biblically, they're biblically, a biblical model. We believe that's what we see in scriptures, it's a biblical way of doing things. As a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 5, verse 42, it says, day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they, the believers, the early church, never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. 
So remember last week we saw in Acts chapter 4 when they prayed for the enabled boldness, I said there's two things you need. Yes, you need to be enabled. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the boldness of the Holy Spirit. But there's a responsibility step on your part is to begin to speak the Word. If you're going to speak the Word of boldness, you've got to have the boldness from the Holy Spirit, but you've got to speak it. Well, the church meant what they prayed for, and here they are in Acts chapter 5. They're never stopped talking about Jesus, the Messiah. They're walking in that boldness, and they're meeting in two places. They're doing it in two places. They're doing it in the temple courts. That's like your church setting here. This is a corporate, large group, corporate setting. But they also never stop talking about Jesus in, from house to house, in their homes and in their small groups as they group together in one another's homes. So those are the two places we be, believe the Bible says that we should be speaking, not only in our community, but encouraging one another corporately and in small groups as well. Also, you'll see that in the Bible, the Bible's written in a very relational context. It's all about our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. I like to call it, you know, vertical and horizontal relationships. We have a vertical relationship with God, but we also have horizontal relationships to one another. So the Bible is written in a very relational context. As a matter of fact, a lot of your Hebrew models for teaching is based on what you might call circles versus rows. Think about these two words, circles versus rows. In a Hebrew setting, they would oftentimes sit around in a small group setting in a circle and people would discuss and ask questions and bring up topics, and that's how they educated one another, and that's how they learned. Now, here in America, we have more taken on more of a Greek model. Think about rows, where we have a lecturer talking to people who are lined up sitting in rows. That's what I'm doing today. This is how most of our education, public education is, how most of our higher education institutions are. It's more of a Greek model. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's circles versus rows. Now, when you're doing rows like on today, you can't necessarily talk to one another. You can't ask questions. You can't share what's going on in your life. You can't really have input, but you're getting content and you're getting information. But this content and information is going to be lived out in your small groups because in your circles, in your small groups, you can say, hey, I've got a question about this. I didn't quite understand that. Hey, you know, let me just tell you what God did in my life. You can share with one another. You can have input. You can pray for one another. You can encourage each other and build each other up. So what you're getting on um, today is pretty much rows. When you go to your life groups, your small groups, it's pretty much circles. And I believe that one of the greatest ways we can learn is by doing life together. Because life is a journey. It's a process. We just take the preaching. It gives us the catalyst for change. But the change, I believe, is really going to occur in your hearts when you get into your small group settings. That's where things really begin to change. So we want to make sure that we do that. And if you're leading a life group, life groups last about an hour. You want to make sure that you don't have about 45 minutes of lecture and only 15 minutes of discussion or you're missing the whole point. It should be about the discussion time, a little bit of teaching, but a lot of discussion, a lot of input, a lot of sharing with one another, circles versus rows. The second thing is, is because people need to be known. You know, there's two things that everybody needs. Everybody needs to be needed. We'll talk about that later when we talk about serving and making a difference. You want to feel like you're having an impact and you're changing your world, but all of us, whether you want to admit it or not, you need to be known. Now, today is name tag day, so you can know me as Pastor Scott. I can know you as Jim or Sue or Sally or Dave, but, you know, I don't really know you, don't really get to know you until we spend time together. So in these life groups, as you spend time together, people begin to know who I really am. Who am I really? Who are you really? So we have a need. We need to be known, and we need to know each other. So yes, these name tags and coming together on Sunday morning help us to get acquainted in a general sense, but we really are known in our small group settings. Number three, because real life change, put this in your notes, happens in the context of relationships. A sermon can give you content, a sermon can give you biblical instructions, but you really work it out in your relationships. You take what you hear, you work it out with your husband, with your wife, with your family, with your work relationships, with your small group. So we really, really begin to experience a life change in relationships. And think about it, it kind of makes sense because some of the greatest hurts you ever have in your life are going to be relational hurts, right? People that hurt you in relationships, where well, there's also great 
and tremendous healing in relationships as well. So the problem is if you get hurt in a relationship, you tend to isolate yourself and pull away and say, I'll never get in another relationship again with anyone. But when you get in relationships with people, that's where you find your healing. So it's very important that we get together, we group together, because life changes in this context of relationships. There's a very interesting scripture, James 5, 16. Let's read it together. Let's put it up here. It says, therefore, confess your sins to Jesus. Is that what it says? I didn't know if y'all are paying attention or not. So confess your sins to who? Each other. Now, there are a, there, I can show you 20 or so scriptures right now that says confess your sins to Jesus. You need to confess your sins to Jesus, confess your sins to Jesus first and foremost, but this verse is talking about something a little bit farther deeper into that. It says, confess your sins to each other. Why in the world would you ever want to do that? Confess your sins to each other and, oh, so you can receive prayer and pray for one another. Why would you want to pray about my sins or my problems or things I'm going through so that you may be healed? So that healing would flow, the prayer of righteous person is powerful and effective. So when I get together with other righteous people, other believers, and I just say, look, I'm having a, a struggle with this. I'm having a problem with pride. Sometimes I feel guilty. Sometimes me and my wife argue. Or, you know, sometimes me and my kids, we have a strained relationship. You know, I, I find myself watching things I shouldn't watch on TV or whatever. And can you just pray for me and encourage me and help me get through this process? And we can be there for one another. So we want to make sure that we are confessing what's going on in our lives to one another and praying for each other so that we will be healed. And I will, I'll just say this. I'll add this in is that more than likely the healing and the freedom you're going to experience is whenever you tell someone else. The, the, to the proportion that you keep that silent and secret is going to affect you as far as receiving healing or not. But when you become honest and you tell somebody, counselor, friend, life group members, somebody, it helps you begin a healing process. But if you just keep it secret, you're not going to find your healing. You may never find your deliverance as well. So that's why the Bible says, confess your faults to one another. So thinking about this, I want to just kind of share with you, there's something called the um, Johori window of relationships, and it's four different windows, but let's just talk about this for a minute. I think it'll help you understand, because the first window is the arena. This is kind of what we're all experiencing today. I know, and you know, this is public. It's common knowledge. It's open to everybody. It's kind of very surface. We all know what's going on today. This is when you come to the church world, it's, this is your hallelujah, praise the Lord, glad to see you, brother. Hey, how's everything going? What do you say? Fine. If you're really spiritual, you say, I'm blessed and highly flavored. You know, you say, uh, you, know, so you, you just step it up a notch, you know, you got your smile on, everything's good, you're good, I'm good, we're all good, right? And that can happen on a Sunday morning, but there's the second area, and it's called mask. And this is, I know, but you don't know. So... Don't think that COVID-19 got us all wearing masks. You guys, I've been, all of us, we've been wearing masks for years, right? Because there's certain things that I know about my life that I don't want everyone to know. So when I come into my arena, I'm wearing a mask. And you're wearing a mask. And I don't want you to know. And I, I don't want anyone to find out. I know, but you don't know. So I have to understand this again. Let me say it again. You're probably going to stay emotionally sick proportional, proportionally to how much you're willing to share with someone else. When I let my mask down, I say, I just need to talk to somebody. My healing process has begun. When you're open, you're honest, we just take our mask off, you're going to find freedom, you're going to find healing. Now, a great example is Psalms 51 and Psalms 32, because in Psalms 51, David, King David, is praying his prayer of repentance because he has sinned, committed adultery of Bathsheba, and in the process had her husband murdered. So he's confessing his sin. He's saying, you know, Lord God, forgive me of my sins. It feels so good uh, to be forgiven. But that confessional prayer did not occur until David got called out 
by the prophet Nathan. He was what I got called Nathanized. Nathan pointed his sin out, and when he pointed David's sin out, David then began that process of seeking God's forgiveness. Now, prior to that, he was hiding his sin. And that's what you read about in Psalms 32, where he talks about, he opens up Psalms 32 with, Woo, how blessed it is to be forgiven. How blessed it is to be covered with mercy. And he says, you know, I once was covering my sin. And when I covered my sin, I was wasting away. Anybody, can, can you relate to that? He said, it's like being outside, uh, you know, on a hot summer South Georgia day. Well, he didn't say Georgia, but he talked about being out in the, in the heat. You're, you're just melting away because you're covering your sin. And it's eating you up. You've covered it up. But he says, but then I uncovered, and I confessed my faults, and now God has covered me with grace and mercy. So you've got to uncover so God can cover you with grace and mercy. As long as you've got your sins covered up, you're just stumbling around in your sins, and it is torturous to you. Maybe you need to be Nathanized, or maybe you just need to come clean and begin to confess your faults to one another. You've got to take those masks off. The next one, this is one of my favorites, it's the blind spot. This is, you know, but I don't know. This is basically, look at your neighbor and say, you've got spinach in your teeth. Yeah, you, got a piece of, you got a piece of cereal right there. You, know, I just, you, you don't know it. You don't see it, but everyone else sees it, okay? Everyone else knows it. Now, if I, now, I, y'all quit licking your teeth. I see y'all out there, everybody go, mmm, yeah, you know, I got to check it out right now. But, you know, you, you, and then you're upset because no one told you. What do you mean I had a booger hanging from my nose? You know, well, why didn't someone tell me? You let me preach like that? You know, I'd be infuriated if you don't tell me. But, so, you know, you know, you, you know, but, but I, I don't know. In other words, you see something in me that needs work on, and not only do you know, but everyone else knows, and everybody's just afraid to tell me, or we're all afraid to tell you, but in these small groups, there comes a point where you can lovingly say, look, you know, let's just be honest with you, you know, I, I recognize something new that I was dealing with myself, or, you know, you don't really see this in yourself, no, really, I'm not like that, oh, yes, you are, ask anyone in our group, you're like that, you know, we all know you're like that, so uh, we're going to help you through this, so it's going to help you through your blind spots in the fourth window, of relationships is potential. This is I don't know and you don't know. In other words, this is not something that we even understand yet. We may not know, but in our small group, we're going to begin to realize and find out our full potential in God. You're going to help me find my full, full potential. I'm going to help you find your full potential, even if we don't even realize it yet. I don't know and you don't know, but it's going to be a great time of discovery together. And this discovery, discovery is going to occur in these small group settings. So this is what we want to do as we're working through our small groups. The fourth one, the fourth why of small groups is this. Because growth happens in relationships. Growth happens in relationships. There's a verse you may be familiar with. It's for some reason, it's become a sort of a men's ministry verse, but it's really for everybody. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We're there to make each other sharp. We're there to hone each other. Sometimes I think of relationships as a little bit of sandpaper in my life because I've got some rough edges, and all of a sudden what you're doing and what you're saying begins to aggravate and irritate me, especially if you begin to confront me with my issues. But you're like just that sandpaper that's just coming along and sanding me down and get me nice and smooth. And then also when you sharpen a blade, sometimes you've got to put some oil on it. Maybe you're bringing the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit into my life to help me get sharper. I want to be sharper, so I need you to sharpen me. You want to be sharper, so I'm going to sharpen you. And we're going to discover that in our life groups as we begin to grow together. Now, you know, several people will be a life, in life groups, but several people will also be life group leaders. And people are thinking, you know, I... I you know, I possibly could lead a life group, but I'm not a Bible scholar. I had not been to seminary or anything like that. And basically, this is what you're saying as a life group leader. If you're, you can be a leader if you're just willing to pray for your group daily. You're going to commit to praying for your group because, remember, you're going to help sharpen them as they're sharpening you. You're just going to host a weekly gathering. You're going to identify where people are spiritually. I, I realize where you are, just where I'm at, and help them take their next step. That's what you do as a, now that's growth. That's the definition of growth right there. You're getting prayed for. You're getting together in community. We're identifying where we are spiritually, and we're helping each other grow in God. 
we're helping each other take these next steps. So growth is going to happen. Again, sermons give you context. Sermons give you teachings. But the growth and the change is going to happen in your small group. So I highly encourage you today. You're going to see a handout in your, in your notes that, where you can sign up for a life group today. So be thinking about that as we move along. Now, very quickly, especially for those of you that are new today, I want to kind of share with you the mechanics of how we do life groups here at Believer's Church. Eight things, but we'll go through them pretty quick. Number one, groups are built on common interest or felt need. This is what we call the, the free market system. If you are interested in something, a common interest, other people are probably interested in it as well. If you're interested in NASCAR, if you're interested in basketball, if you're interested in knitting, if you're interested in cooking, if you're, whatever you're interested in, other people will group together with you based on that common interest. Or it could be a felt need. A felt need could be like, I just feel like we need to work on our finances, so I'm going to go to Financial Peace University. Or I feel like, you know, my marriage needs help, so I'm going, we're going to go to the marriage group. Or I've got teenagers, if somebody do not help me, oh, you know, I, I, it's a felt need. I've got to have some help. We've got teenagers in the house. So other people are feeling the same thing. So you get together on this common interest or this felt need to encourage one another, to build one another up. Now, understand this, that um, the, these groups are, the, the content is not really what's going to bring the life change, the, the coming together as a group. And working it out is going to bring the life change. Sometimes the content is nothing more than a hook to get you to come. Well, I'm interested in cooking. Or I've always been interested in gardening. Or I'm interested in the book of Romans. Or I'm interested in that book by Lisa Higgs. So, you know, so that's the hook to get me there. But when I get there, the change is going to occur in those circles. When we're talking to one another, we're building each other up, and we're supporting one another. We also have what we call life app groups here at Believer's Church. You'll notice on the, uh, the end of your notes, it says life app group, app group and family devotional application. So we actually, these are for your family to discuss with your family, but we also have groups that take Sunday sermon as the content, and then they get together in a small group, and they discuss Sunday sermon, and they get it really down in their heart, their spirit, their soul, and they really come to an understanding of it. So again, you don't have to fret over the content in a life app group because the content's already provided for you on Sunday mornings. We'll send you all the notes and everything. Then all you'll have to do is pray for your group, host a weekly gathering, identify where people are spiritually, and urge them on to their next step. Number two is this. We need to have intentional formation groups needed here at Believer's Church. I call these anchor groups. Now, anchor group, what is an anchor group? Well, you know what a, an anchor store is, a big box store, right? You have a mall, and a mall has a candle shop, and they got a little boutique, they got a little shoe shop. They have all these small stores, but a mall only survives because of the anchor stores, because they have a belt, or they have a Dillard's, or they have a Macy's, or used to be have a J.C. Penney's, Penney's crew over there. So, you know, th those are the things that make the mall survive when you have the big box stores. Well, we had to have anchor groups so that all the other common interest groups can survive. So, in other words, normally when these are free market systems, so I don't go out and say, hey, Helen, I want you to do a group on this, and Nelson, I want you to do a group on that, and John, I want you to do a group on this. But out of your, what God leads you to do, you come to me and say, can I do a group on this? And we check it out and say, sure, that looks great. Why don't we release you in the ministry to do that group? But I don't assign people to groups. Or I don't normally create groups, but I'm beginning to understand after doing this for a while, there's certain groups we just need to have. These anchor groups, anchor groups would be things like, think about this, like couples ministry, you got to have a couples group, men's group, ladies group, you need a financial group, you need student ministry going on, student groups, you need outreach and serving groups, and you need prayer groups. So those are going to be what we call our anchor groups that... If we don't have those, I may be coming to you and saying, hey, would you mind leading a group in this area? Number three, we're going to use the big events here to promote life groups. So will we never have big events at Believer's Church? Will we still have youth conference, ladies conference, or whatever? We may, but as God leads, but if we do, all the big conferences and things that we have will point people and direct people, look, you really need to join a life group. You really need to be part of a life group. Be in one and or lead one. 
We may have a men's dinner that kicks off to signing up for life groups. Guys, we're having a dinner, fish fry this coming uh, Friday, but it's all going to be to learn about the men's life groups that are available to you to sign up for. Number four is this. Groups meet weekly. This is very important. Uh, we've kind of... Um, We've sort of let people slide on this a little bit in the past, but I want to get back to this. It's very important that you meet weekly to build a relationship. Now, here's the good news. Uh, you'll see the schedule. There's also a schedule in there you can look at later, but we're only asking people to group together. If you came to every single life group, it's only 38 weeks out of the 32. So if, but if you meet weekly, you can build a relationship with the people in your group and you're more likely to experience life change. Now, if I'm saying my group is every other week, and I happen to miss one. You know, there's reasons that we all miss. It's 14 days before I see you again. And so how are we going to build this relationship in 11 weeks if I'm only seeing you every 14 days? Or some people say, well, I want my group just to meet monthly. Well, that's even worse. If you miss one in a monthly group, it's 60 days before you get together with that group again. How are you going to build relationships only seeing each other every 60 days? So we encourage that the, uh, I think the longest life group period is 11 weeks. The shortest is eight weeks. But we encourage you during that time to try to come weekly if possible so that we can do this. This is what I learned from uh, the Church of the Highlands. Chris Hodges said so that you can have ESPN. Of course, when you say ESPN, all the guys' ears pop up. Oh, ESPN. Yep, you can have encouragement, scripture, prayer, and next steps. We can encourage one another. We can share scripture together. We can pray for each other. And again, we can help each other discover our next steps in Christ Jesus. Where do I go from here? Number five, groups are going to occur quarterly. A group segment, a group block is going to be quarterly, winter, spring, summer, and fall. It's very important that we have a very clear starting period and a very clear ending period. So we just finished back in the fall. We finished our fall life groups at Believer's Church. We went on a Christmas break. So it has now been four weeks since we've had life groups here at Believer's Church. Now, understand this. We did not have life groups during that time. This morning, right now, we do not have any life groups at Believer's Church. When will the life groups start? Tomorrow. Winter, winter quarters rolling around. So you have a clear starting point and a clear ending point. And see, here's the problem when we try to get together and have small groups or Bible study. You go over to your next door neighbor. You say, hey, you know, why don't you come into our house Thursday night? My wife's going to cook some barbecue. And we're going to study the book of Romans together. And he's thinking, well, barbecue sounds good. Romans, I've always wanted to know more about the book of Romans. So when is this group starting? This coming Thursday, 7 o'clock. Okay, and when will it end? I, I don't know. I guess it'll never end. You know, uh, who knows? It's just going to go on forever. It's going to be an eternity group, evidently. But uh, Americans, and especially men, I was just, I confess our faults one to another. Men want to know the starting and the ending point. Okay, I, I, how many of you guys when you walked in today looked at your service orders and said, now what time is this thing getting over again? You know, I, I need to know. Well, don't trust that number right there because it gets over when Pastor Scott gets through running his mouth. But basically, the, you know, we, we like to know a starting point and any point. This group's going to begin here and it's going to end there. And I'm more willing to commit to something if I know what it's requiring out of me. What is the commitment that is expected out of me? A, a clear starting point. And a clear ending point. Now, here's the good thing about it. The number one reason, do you know what the number one reason is that people don't join a small group? It's because the small group already exists. And I don't feel like I can jump in there because that group's been meeting together. They've been hanging out together. They've been doing life together. Men are tight knit. So I, I don't, don't feel like I can fit in. Well, listen, all groups have stopped. Now that they're starting back up tomorrow, this is your own ramp to the superhighway of life groups. You know, this allows you to get on that own ramp and get up there. You'll be signing up for a group. So will everyone else here today be signing up for a group. And then they will have a clear ending point as well. The good thing about an ending point is it allows you to change groups. Look, I love you guys. We've been doing group together. We've been doing this, this marriage group. It's been awesome. But... I really feel like my wife and I, we need to go to Financial Peace 
right now. So we're going to go to the financial piece this next quarter. But, you know, after that, I think I'm going to go to a men's group. My wife wants to go to a ladies' group because there's just certain things guys can share together and girls can share together. So it's okay. It's okay to change groups. But as you do, you're going to be building relationships with different people as you work through these different groups together. So they're going to be winter, spring, summer, and fall. We're going to try to make them as convenient to the calendar as possible. Sometimes that gets kind of tricky with everything going on in the world today. Number five is this. I mean, number six is this. Groups are going to be covered in prayer by pastors, coaches, and or leaders. I guarantee you, if you don't get anything else out of a life group, when you get in a life group, somebody's going to be praying for you daily. I'm encouraging all of our life group leaders to lift up their members in prayer on a daily, daily basis. So they're going to be praying for you daily. We're going to be praying for you as a church as well because the bottom line is messy church equals great church. You know what? Again, we've all got issues. Church can get messy. You've got some messy people in here. We're all messy people, but messy people come together and we begin to experience life transformation and change together and we become a great church. You know, some people think, what a great church. A great church would have no sinners in it. A great church would have no gossipers in it. A great church would have no hypocrites in it. A great church would have no prejudiced people in it. I say, oh, no, no, no. Great churches have all those things. Because these people are coming in to get their lives changed and transformed. And we're willing to admit that we need help. So we're coming to find help from Christ Jesus and find strength in one another. So yes, in every church, you need your mature believers. that They just know everything. They're clicking along. You need your baby Christians. But you also need your hellbounders in there as well. Uh, you need everybody with problems being in there. Because that's where we're all going to experience life change. And eventually those hellbounders receive Jesus. They become the baby Christians. They get up in the I chair, you know, that's when church becomes about me, 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 I, 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 I. And then I, then I get more mature. To say, oh, no, it's not just about me. It's about others. And then the mature go out and reach to what? The hell bounders. We bring them in again. So, see, so they become heaven bounders instead of hell bounders. So, they, so, you know, the messy church equals great church. Number seven, we're never going to stop recruiting or training leaders. We're always going to be casting this vision because we believe that God has called all of us to do works of ministry. And what a better way for you to express a ministry than in a life group of your own. Because, you know, you're saying, well, I feel like I see that God, the Bible tells you to equip me for works of ministry. Where am I going to minister to people? Because Joe's already singing, Scott, you're already preaching. Where am I going to minister? You're going to minister in your life groups. And I want you to see it's your honor and it's your privilege to share Jesus with others, to help people grow in the Lord, whether you're leading a life group or just being in it. It's a privilege that we get in this country to get together in these small groups. I think that some of you probably appreciate that now after a year, a pandemic. You know, you're understanding it's really nice to get together and be with people again and to be in a small group. So we want to keep casting that vision. It's going to require us to keep training people, training new leaders as well. Number eight. This was number one, but I moved it to number eight because I've I, I got some things to talk about after this because this is a shift for Believer's Church. So if you're new today, we're all hearing this pretty much for the first time unless you're in leadership. The church must have a total commitment to small groups. Total commitment. We need to turn everything that happens into relational small groups outside of our corporate settings. So this is something that, you know, I've struggled with for years. Um, Janet and I, we, we implemented uh, the small group system here at Believer's Church in 2004. But we've always had other things going on. And the problem is sometimes people will only give you one thing a week. Maybe two. Now, when I was growing up, it was different. I can talk about the good old days. All that time, you know, we got up, we went to Sunday school. Then we went to big church. Remember that? I remember calling it Big Church. Then we went to Training Union. Then we went to church again at night. And then we came back on Wednesday night for prayer meeting, GAs, RAs. You can tell them Southern, was raised Southern Baptist by, by those terms. And then, you, um, and then we found, and then, you know, then you had your visitation night, and you had your men's prayer night. And, uh, and we just went to church all the time. Well, in our your choir practice, in, in our society, we're lucky to get you guys to show up one time a week. I'm just being honest with you. Most people only come to church every other week. And on a national average, it's once a month, church attendance. So I'm saying, look, this is what I want you to do. I want you to show up for the large group, the corporate setting. 
as often as you can. And once a week, I want you to be in a small group setting. Give it a shot. Give it an effort. And then the third thing we'll talk about on another Sunday, we want you to experience being needed. We want to teach you how to serve and how to help people at the same time. So we're, we're going to say, look, just come and uh, we're going to make a full commitment. If it's not happening in a corporate setting, it's only going to happen in small groups. So you might be saying, well, what's that mean with our Wednesday night services? Because are we still going to have Wednesday night? Well, normally we get together, we do Wednesday night Bible study, we teach, kids meet and everything. But yeah, on Wednesday nights, we're going to still meet. Go to the next slide there, guys. So on Wednesday night, um, because Wednesday night tends to compete with the life groups, we're just going to have to say, we're, we're not going to compete anymore. So we're still going to meet on Wednesday, but uh, we're going to meet for several things. We're going to have prayer beginning probably in February from 6 to 6.30 on Wednesday night. And then the Believing Kids and Promised Land will still meet. All the children's ministries will be here from 6.30 to 7.30. And our edge for our, our teenagers, they're, they're going to be meeting out there from 6.30 to 7.30 as well. Now, what's everyone else going to do? Well, we're going to be having life groups on Wednesday night also. There's going to be four life groups coming up this Wednesday night from 6.30 to 7.30. We're going to have two life app groups that meet here in the sanctuary. They'll take the information that we cover on Sundays, and they'll discuss it and talk about it. They'll pray for one another and encourage one another. We're also going to have two of our anchor groups. Remember I said you have to have anchor groups going on on uh, Wednesday night. One is going to be Financial Peace University and Believing Couples because these are two groups that pretty much demand you have child care or you have somebody t caring for your children, taking care of them, and uh, an extra bonus for us, teaching our children while I'm learning about finances. And if you don't go through financial peace as husband and wife together, it's probably not going to work. As a matter of fact, it may cause a few. You might need to go to the marriage class after that if you don't both go. And, then, but, and then also, if you're going to go to a marriage class together, you want to make sure your kids are getting ministered to while you're getting ministered to. So that will be available for you. Possibly even a single mom or single ladies group might meet on a Wednesday night as well because that would demand some child care as well. But we're going to try to keep our Wednesday nights for some of these uh, anchor groups that definitely need some sort of child care. Now, also, this is kind of more into next week's sermon, but i got to mention it this week. Next week, we're going to talk about bold next steps. And on Wednesday nights, I'm going to be in the pavilion, and I'm going to be teaching people about what our next steps are. The first Wednesday night, we're not going to meet because we will have met on the first Sunday in our newcomer social. Last week was the first Sunday. We had a newcomer social. We had 38 people, and including their children, 38 people total, came to our newcomer social last week where they heard what Believer's Church is all about. If you're thinking, shucks, I'm new today. I missed it last week. Guess what? It's going to happen on the next first Sunday coming up uh, as well. So they're, they're going to be, well, you'll see the schedule when it comes up again. So uh, then on the second Wednesday out in the pavilion. I'm going to be teaching what life groups are all about. So you're getting an overview today, but if you really want to know about life groups, how they really work, how you can be in one, how can you can lead one, show up. You don't have to, I mean, just be in one period, much less lead one, but show up this Wednesday night at 630 in the pavilion. I'm going to talk to you about that over there. On the third Wednesday nights, we're going to have our membership information class. These are our next steps. Uh, it's going to teach you what membership at Believer's Church is all about. Coming to that class will not mean that you have to join Believer's Church as a member, but you'll have all the information you need to pray about whether God wants you to be a member here or not. And on the fourth Wednesday nights, we're going to talk to you about those ministry teams because remember, you want to be not only known, but needed. We're going to help you discover your spiritual gifts. We're going to teach you about first serve and we're going to help you find your team to serve on here at Believer's Church and how to minister in the community as well. So these will repeat every month. Unless there's a holiday or something comes up that prevents us from having it, you might get bumped back a week or something. We might say, hey, it's Vacation Bible School this week, so we're going to miss, we're going to miss a particular one this week. But otherwise, they're going to keep running every Wednesday night throughout the year because my desire is for everyone in here to go through all four of these. So if you can't come to the life group one, they might come next time. And then always know that the next week there's memberships going to be available. And then team ministry is going to be available as well. So we're going to be working you through these next steps. Now let me just kind of close with this because Believer's Church has always had 
ministries, we've had ministries called the Big Three. And you're saying, what is the Big Three? The Big Three is our couples ministry, our men's ministry, and our, um, our ladies' ministry. Now, these are not going to end. They're going to continue on, but they're going to be expressed this year. We're going to give it a try. We're going to experiment. We feel like this is where God has taken us. I'm not saying, thus saith the Lord, this has to be this way, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to try this out, that all of our ministry is going to be expressed. The big three is going to be expressed in life groups, in ladies' life groups, in men's life groups, and in couples' life groups. So if you want to be ministered to, in your marriage, get in a marriage group. If you want to be ministered to as a man, get in a men's group. If you want to be ministered to as a lady, get into a lady's life group. All right, one more thing I need to mention here. Online life groups are going to be available as well. You'll notice when I go through the life groups here in a minute that some of them are hybrid where they meet in-house and online. Or you can have a life group just online. It's through our Believers Chat app. It's sort of like Zoom or FaceTime, but it's secure and people can't tap into it. But it's more than that. It's a chat room where all during the week you can talk to one another too. You can post information, teachings. It all stays right there in the room. And it, you would be amazed how close people can get even on an online event. Back when COVID-19 was surging so much, we couldn't have our newcomer socials. I started a newcomer's life uh, app room. And the people that came to that, Matthew was involved in that group, several others, uh, Art and Liz, we got amazingly close to each other online. Would y'all agree? Y'all please nod your head yes. Okay, yeah, uh, okay, whew. I thought they might have kicked me to the curb already. But uh, no, no, we got to know each other really well, and there were some others in that group as well, online. Yeah, even online. Listen, meeting online is better than not meeting at all, right? So you can do an online group. Especially if you're concerned about COVID and spreading things around, or you can be in a hybrid group, or you could be in person. And in person groups, we always try to respect everybody's social distancing. So we're, I want you to know that, like, even for life group leaders, life group leaders know that there's a room in the Believers Chat app for life group leaders where I'm going to post information to you, teaching, encouragement to help you find your strength as a life group leader as well. So what are the life groups here at Believers Church? Let's just jump right on into them. There's the Believers Chat um, information. On Monday night, starting tomorrow night at 6.30, Joe and Katie Sconyers is going to be inviting people into their home for a worship-related life group. What is worship all about? How does worship play in our everyday lives? But you can also join them online if you'd like to. It's a hybrid group. You can do both or either one, or you can swap back and forth. If you can't be at one, you might can also join them online. Also on Monday nights, we have our recovery life group with Raymond Scott. Raymond Scott probably has about 20-some-odd years in uh, helping people find recovery in Christ Jesus. And it's for anyone who's struggling with addiction or has a family member dealing with addiction. This is something I just got to admit I was ignorant to. I, I didn't realize how much a person's addiction affects their family and how much that family needs support as well. So if you have a son or daughter, husband or wife that's struggling with addiction, and even if they won't come, you can come, and you can learn how to minister better to them. So Raymond does a great job. That'll be right here on Monday nights here at 7 p.m. at Believer's Church. Now, the next group, for the first time ever, we have finally got, after all these years, a group called Seasoned Saints Life Group, and this is for our senior adults. Uh, Tammy Bacon, we, I've been wanting a senior group for years, mainly because I'm heading that way rapidly, and I, I need something for myself when I get there. But Tammy Bacon came in one day, and she was telling me about, you know, she felt like God was going to use her for something, but she's trying to figure it out. And I said, well, what group of people do you really want to help? She said, I love seniors. I want to encourage seniors, and I want to help them. And I said, Ding, ding, ding. The hallelujah chorus broke out in my office. Hallelujah. You know, finally, all, after all this time, somebody wants to work with seniors. We need it. It's a group that needs to be encouraged together. So the seniors are going to meet here on Tuesday afternoons at 4 p.m. This is co-ed. You know, there's a picture of a lady up there. This is men and women as well. They're going to meet here at 4. And I teased Tammy. I said, well, the reason all the seniors are meeting at 4 is so they can go to dinner at 5 o'clock, right? And I said, I used to think this is old people 
I only ate dinner at 5 o'clock until I became one and started eating dinner at 5 o'clock too. Then I realized they weren't eating at 5 o'clock because they were old. They were eating at 5 o'clock because they were wise, right? You know, you could beat all the lines. You beat the rush. You get there before everyone else. You get good service. The food's hot and fresh. So, yeah, so 4 o'clock, seniors, come on out and be a part of that. It's going to be a great time together. Now, the only, currently for winter quarter, that is, the only ladies' life group we have going on is going to be Tuesday night, 6.30 to 7.30, ladies' life group. My wife, Janet Moore, is going to be leading this group, and uh, they're going to be using a book by Liz Curtis Higgs, and it's called The Girls Still Got It, okay? And so you can purchase this book, and you can read it, but, and bring it, and be prepared for your lessons, but you don't have to have the book either. You're still going to, because there's going to be a lot of discussion, a lot of talk, a lot of ladies working through some issues together. Yes, even ladies have issues. So, uh, you know, I know y'all didn't know that, but it's true. And, uh, but it's a hybrid group as well. They'll be online. If you don't feel comfortable coming into a group setting, you can watch online. I think Janet normally has her computer set next to her. She talks to ladies, and the people can interact as well, and everybody hears what they're saying. So it's a great way to do it. Ladies, that is your life group for the winter quarter. Uh, there may be, I'm sure there'll be more ladies groups coming up in, in the near future as well. The next group is going to be, um, as they were going, it is a walking group, an encouragement life group hosted at Andy and C.J. Bunch's home. It's going to be on Tuesdays and Thursday nights from 7 to 8. So they're taking a full plunge into this, not just once a week, but they're going to meet twice a week. And they said, if you can't come both times, it's fine, but it's available on Tuesday or Thursday. So that kind of helps you out with your schedule. But they're going to be walking, praying together, encouraging one another as they walk. Now, I will say that CJ texted me and said, Hey, Scott, we can't start this group this Tuesday, but it'll be next Tuesday because her and Andy have been a little bit under the weather. They don't want to make everyone else sick. So they said, let's just wait a week. So we're going to wait a week, and we'll start that group on the following Tuesday, not this coming Tuesday, but the following. Then on Wednesday nights, this is where you're going to have one of our anchor groups. You're going to have couples, life group. Uh, Billy and Christy Smith are going to be leading this group back in the Red Room. There's a book, if you want to get it, called Improving Communication in Your Marriage. Uh, you know, one of the, um, yeah, I saw a lot of husbands and wife look at each other when I said that. Because, uh, you know, one of the main, main problems, there's two, I don't know, they debate about which is the number one cause of divorce. It's either one or two. It's financial problems and or communication problems in marriage cause more divorces than anything else. You got to learn how to talk to each other, guys and gals, okay? And so they're going to help you with this communication process. That'll be right here. You'll check your kids in. You'll go back there in the red room, and you'll, you'll grow in your marriage. Now, in the sanctuary, we're going to have two of our life app groups. We're going to have Mike and Marsha Price are going to be doing a life group. That's where they take Sunday's lesson, they discuss it, talk about it, pray for one another, encourage one another. But also, we're going to have Mike and Cindy Oglesby doing a Life App group as well. So you have two groups here on Wednesday night from 6.30 to 7.30. Life App groups will be a part of. And then, yes, another anchor group is uh, Financial Peace. You know, people have been so set free in this group. They've been retired, tons of debt. They get their financial life in order. That's going to be here in the Red Room, 6.30 to 7.30 on Wednesday nights. Now, it used to cost $150 that we had to pay to Dave Ramsey for you to be in this course, but um, we worked out an agreement where we've, they've entered into a partnership with our church, so we are a member of Financial Peace, so you now only have to pay $25. That doesn't come to us at all. That just pays for your materials, and believe me, they give you a bukoodles of material, budgeting items, and things of that nature as well. So that'll happen here on Wednesday nights at 6.30, so you can sign up for that too. Now our men's group. We have two men's groups going on that you can be a part of. The first one is on Thursday morning at 7 a.m. It's breakfast at Fred's house. Fred Hill is one of our financial board mem members. Um, you can go to his house and encourage yourself, encourage one another as you eat pancakes and drink coffee. So that's, that's a good way to do it as well. So there is a Life Act group. Sign up, be a part of that. Fred will let you know where he lives. You get all those details worked out. So it's going to be a great group. Also, I'm super excited on Thursday night, we have a group that's about another men's group, and it's called David the Great. And it says, uh, the, the sec, um, deconstructing the man after God's own heart. Listen, there's a lot of things going on in David's life. He may have been a man after God's own heart, but that man has some issues. He has some problems. So I love Mark Rutland, who wrote this book. Uh, he's one of my favorites. And um, he, said, he told me, he said, Scott, I wrote this book 
because I wanted to write a book that men would actually read. Because normally, normally men don't normally read books. So I read it. It's awesome. It's good. This is another hybrid group. It'll be in-house here at Believer's Church at 7 a.m. Or you can come join Brandon Robinson and the other guys online through your Believer's Church app as well. And then following that, the last was on Sunday. There's 12 different groups. On Sunday afternoons from 4, let's see what it is, from 4 to, to uh, 530 uh, the, the, the Wagers are going to be here at the church in the pavilion. And this is a family life group focused on family. So you can bring your kids to this. They may, when it wears the worms up, they can play outside on the pavilion or whatever. We'll have you know, people watching them there. But, you know, families, how many of you think that families need a little bit of help these days? yee Yes, we do. So, you know, we all need help. So come be a part of that focused family group. So those are our bold community groups. And like I said... We're entering these things boldly this year with some new commitment. Everything that happens besides what happens in a corporate setting is going to be expressed through a life group. So if you want to be in the ongoings of the life of Believer's Church, join a life group. Be a part of one. If you're new today, you're thinking, hey, this is my first day walking in the door. It's okay. Just come on back next week. These things will keep going all year. We'll get you in one eventually. We'll help you find one that ministers to you and your family. Or you might just want to jump in one right now. You don't have to be a member to come to these. As a matter of fact, you can invite your neighbors to come to these groups as well. You don't even have to attend Believer's Church on Sunday morning to come to one of these groups. So just come and be a part of these groups and grow in the Lord together. Amen? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. And I thank you, like Joey encouraged us to do earlier, we just thank you for your goodness. Your faithfulness to us, Jesus. And Father God, we have seen it over the years. I've seen it over the years since we've been doing this church this coming May will be 20 years. Lord, the families that get involved in a life group their experience and their walk and their experience of church just goes to a whole nother level. And when I desire that for each and every family here, each and every person here, that they just are strengthened, they grow in the Lord, they're strong in the Lord. And Lord, I thank you that you provided a place here at Believer's Church for us to do this. So thank you for that, Jesus. Thank you for a church that's willing to do these life groups. Thank you for life group leaders that are willing to serve. So, Lord Jesus, I pray that you speak to every heart today and you show them, what group should I be in? Is this time for me to take this bold next step, to join a bold community? Lord, lead them. Let them sign up today. And let the life change begin. Now, Jesus, we take just a moment to acknowledge that you are our one and only hope. You are our Savior. And maybe you're here today and your heart is heavy and you're hurting and you're searching. There was a young lady that asked to meet with me after the first service today, church, and she was just broken. And she said, I need, I just need something. I don't know what I need. I said, I think you need Jesus. And she prayed and received Jesus as her Savior. And she prayed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered with boldness as well. And I want to give you an opportunity today, if you're watching online or if you're in the house, to take this, this, the most important, the most crucial next step at all is to accept Jesus as your Savior. The blood of Jesus shed for you is the only forgiveness of your sins. Because, see, all of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short of God's glory. All of us feel separated from God. But Jesus comes and saves our soul. And He reconciles us to God. He brings us back into a relationship with Him. We as unholy people get into a relationship with the holy God and we begin to be transformed and changed into Jesus' image so maybe this is your day right now in this service every head's bowed every eye's closed for you to say a prayer to ask Jesus to be your savior we'll, we'll pray it with you as a group we'll help you get through this we'll show you how it's done so I'm going to open my eyes. If everyone else still has their head bowed, their eyes closed, I'm looking around the room. And if you want to pray today and surrender your life to Jesus and allow him to breathe his Holy Spirit into you, would you just lift your hand and say, Pastor Scott, that's me. I need Jesus today. Yes, ma'am, I, I see your hand there. 
I need him as my Savior. Maybe you need to recommit to him. Maybe you've gotten far. Maybe you went to church as a child and you're far away from Jesus now. And you hear him calling you home, calling you home today. Yes. Yes, sir. I see your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that people have the boldness to say, yes, it's me. Jesus, have mercy. Have mercy on me. So, church, we're going to be praying for these that have their hands up. We're just going to kind of join with them. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand there in the middle as well. So let's all say this with them because we love them. We know Jesus loves them. We love them too. Even if today's the first day we met them, we already love them in Jesus' name. So let's all say this prayer. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, forgive me from all my sins, all my shortcomings, all my mistakes. I acknowledge Jesus that you died on a cross that paid a price for my sins. Now wash me clean. Lord Jesus, breathe your spirit into me right now. I receive it unto salvation. I believe and I receive. I thank you, Jesus, that my life is now going to be radically changed and transformed because you're going to be my leader you're going to be my guide and you're going to fill me with your Holy Spirit daily in your name we pray amen give the Lord a hand for these salvations day God is a good God God is a great God well, we're going to go ahead right now, and we're going to receive our tithes and offerings as part of our worship experience. You know, we hadn't done this in a while because of COVID, but we decided we'd, we felt like it should be more incorporated into what we do because it's a worship expression as well. So our ushers are going to be coming in just a minute, and they'll just go right to where you're at, and you can drop your offering in there. If you've got your communication card with your prayer request, you can put that in there. If you've got your card filled out for your life group, put that in the basket when it goes around as well. If you miss it, turn it in at the Welcome Center before you leave. All of our new guests today, we want you to uh, go to the Welcome Center. Go ahead and take your, you can hold your little card out and go to the Welcome Center and turn it in there. We've got some gifts to give you. I've got a little book to give you, and I got, we got a mug and some things to give you as well. So save your card and turn it in there. Uh, for the rest of us, we'll put our cards in here. We'll put our life group uh, sign-ups in here as well. And Father God, I just thank you that we do have people that cheerfully give. And we do cheerfully give today. And as we give, Lord God, we know that you're using these monies to, so that we can have things like life groups, so that we can help people experience change and transformation, so we can help each other find strength in God. So Lord Jesus, use every dollar, every penny that's given today for your kingdom purposes and for your glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everyone that agrees says, amen. 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 And yes, we do encourage you all to join our life groups. And you want to be a part of this. We know this is where real life change is going to happen. You're going to meet people in these groups that are going to love you as you grow in Christ together, as you fellowship and, and you're discipled together. And you know, no matter what this world throws at you, no matter what people do it throughout this life, whatever happens in this world, you know that you can always run and, and trust in those that are a part of these life groups. And so we really want you to be in these and know that you've got a friend when you join Believer's Life Groups. When you're down in trouble and you need a helping hand and nothing oh nothing is going right close your eyes and think of me soon I will be there to brighten your darkest night you just call out my name and you know wherever I am I come running yeah you see 
you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, and all you've got to do is call, and I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. You've got a friend. The sky above you should turn dark and full of clouds. Yeah. And that old north wind should begin to blow. Yeah. Keep your head together. upon your door you just call out my name and you know wherever I am yes I'll come running yes I will get to see you again oh yeah yeah winter spring summer or fall And I'll be there, yes I will Hey, ain't it good to know that you've got a friend People can be so cold They'll hurt you, send yes, desert you They'll take your soul if you let them No, don't you let them just call out my name, yeah. And you know wherever I am, I'll come running, yeah, yeah, yeah. See you again. Oh, yeah. Winter, spring, summer, or fall. Oh, and all you got to do is call. Yes, I will. You've got a friend. You've got a friend. Yeah. Ain't it good to know you've got a friend? Ain't it good to know you've got a friend? Oh, yes. You've got a friend. That is good to know we have a friend in Jesus, but we also have friends in one another. You know, I want those friends at 2 o'clock in the morning, I can call you up. You come running to my side, and you find those friends in your, your life group. Well, this is what we're going to do. I want you to come back next Sunday because we're going to talk about some more enabled boldness. We're going to talk about some bold next steps in your personal life and in your career and your spiritual life. How do you get from A to Z? Well, you get there one step at a time. We want to talk to you about that and encourage you in taking bold next steps this coming year and beyond. So be a part of that next week. And then in a moment, I'm about to pray for you and bless you. And when I get through blessing you, the ushers will help you leave out, you know, a row at a time to help practice our social distancing. But also, if you are new today, Please come out to the Welcome Center, to the foyer, say hello, let me get to know you a little bit, and let me give you a few gifts I have for you, and I'll give you some information about the church as well. So uh, we're going to pray and bless you. I want to pray uh, re restoration to you and your family. I want to pray for your finances. I want to pray for your healing as well. But I also want to take just a moment and ask you to pray for me today as well. It's nothing that, you know, we need to go into a panic or worry about, but uh my, my doctor, Dr. O is back there, Dr. Okabawa, Dr. Daniel. And, uh, you know, I have a large, enlarged prostate, he discovered, and uh, through blood work. And so tomorrow I'm going to go for a biopsy to determine whether it's cancer or not. So I thought, well, we'll just wait for hear from the biopsy, you know, and find out if you got cancer. And if you got cancer, 
you'll take the treatment and you'll ask the church to pray for you for healing. Doesn't that sounds like a good thing to do, right? And then I thought, well, why wait? I mean, why not? Why not? Why not? Why have it when I go tomorrow? I mean, why don't we pray today? Ask y'all to agree with me in prayer today so that when I go get my test tomorrow, 14 days later when the results come back, it'll be negative. I won't have prostate cancer, right? So, uh, so I, I, that's the way I like to do it. And uh, so this is what I do. Just a little, just little mini sermon here, guys. This is what I like to do. I, uh, I take my doctor's orders. Dr. Okabal's a good doctor. If you need a good doctor, he's the man. Uh, he's very smart, very sharp, very insightful, good man. Um, and a believer in Christ Jesus as well. <laughs> That's important to me. And then I take my medicine, but also take my medicine the Word of God. We have these uh, healing cards out in the foyer, and there's a verse that says in Proverbs 4:20 20 through 22, it says, My child, pay attention to my words. Listen attentively to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Guard them with your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to one's entire body. I believe every part of our body, there's life and healing in God's Word. So I take His Word as medicine. I read Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace is upon Him. And by His stripes that He bore on His back, I am healed in Jesus' name, right? So I, I claim His Word. First, Peter, Bring it to the New Testament, 1 Peter 2, 24. He personally carried our sins on the body. Some of you received salvation today because of what Jesus did. You're dead to sin. Now you can live right for Him and by His wounds again. We are healed. There's scriptures here that says the Son of Man will rise with healing in His wings. I am the Lord your God. I will put none of these diseases upon you. And I am the Lord that healeth thee. So I begin to take my medicine along with my other medicine, okay? So I'm just letting you know this is what I do. So maybe when you get sick, you can do the same thing as well. Or maybe you can just start speaking it now and not have to experience sickness. So uh, it's just something that we do. We work together. And you know, our lives are to please Jesus. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. Our lives are all set for all eternity in heaven with Him if we're a believer in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to pray. I'll actually pray for myself. And I'm going to ask you all to extend your hands toward me. Well, yeah, this, they're my social circle, so it's okay. We, we work together every day. We breathe on each other all the time. So as I... Uh, but they're, they're going to anoint me for and pray for me. Can you do that? And then y'all pray for me. Then I want to pray for you when we get through. Is that okay? All right. So um, we're just going to believe God. Uh, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And Jesus told the blind man, he said, I believe all things are possible if you believe. Do you believe in Jesus? I believe. Thank you, Jesus. We come to you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Yes, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the great physician, our healer. Yes, Lord, we thank you that you're Jehovah Rapha. Yes, Jesus. Yes, you are, Jesus. And we proclaim yes. and stand upon the promise yes, of Jesus. your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, Amen. thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Father God, we all come to you today in Jesus' name. Lord, what an honor it is to call unto you during our time of need. And Lord, I know there are people in this church that need you so much more right now, Jesus, that there's those that are suffering with COVID, Lord God, that you heal their bodies completely. As a matter of fact, God, we just curse COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. Like we've done every day since this thing began, we send it back to the pits of hell where it belongs. It's nothing but a divider. It causes division and problems. We bind it. We curse it in Jesus' name. And we speak life and healing to any that are suffering with it today, Lord God. 
Lord, we thank you for Miss Anita, who's in the hospital recovering from her surgery, that you're going to speak life and healing and restoration to her body. Lord, we thank you for those that other members of our church that have cancer as well. Lord, there's even some that are suffering with prostate cancer. Even now, Jesus, that you will speak life and healing, Lord, to them. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Lord, if it's just a common cold, if it is whatever it may be, Lord, if it's if it's sinus problems, Jesus, if if it's broken bones or torn ligaments, Jesus. We just speak life and healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, bring healing and restoration. Restore us emotional healing as well. Lord God, restore our families from divisions, strife, quarrels. Lord God, that couples love each other, that children love their parents, that us be examples of, to the world of how we should live as believers in Christ Jesus. And Lord God, let us take this, this good news of Jesus, this healing power, this salvation out to this lost and dying world, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to be with us. You're going to bless us. You're going to continue to enable us with boldness this year. We're all going to be, continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to join together in small groups and encourage one another in the Lord. And we will be strong and bold. In Jesus' name we pray and bless. And everyone who agrees says, Amen. Amen.